13 years back on the 15th of May 2009, Nifty closed at 3,671. Just before the market closed, an anonymous trader bought several naked option contracts worth 2 lakh rupees. Now, it was not an ordinary weekend we were entering. India was expecting results of the Lok Sabha election to be declared on Sunday. Now, this trader, essentially, was betting on the election outcome. Obviously, he would benefit if the market rallied. But for the market to rally, there were many factors at play. The results were declared on Sunday afternoon, 17th May 2009, and the UPA government got re-elected at the centre and Dr. Manmohan Singh came back to the country's Prime Minister to serve his second term. Now, this was a massive thumbs up from a market perspective. Investors loved it. All of us knew that this trader would make a killing Monday morning. That's 18th May 2009 at market open. But none of us really knew to what extent he would stand to benefit. On the 18th of May 2009, markets opened at 9.55 a.m. Markets back then opened at a different time. The opening was one of its kind. Within minutes, Nifty hit a 20% upper circuit and froze. The ticker showed 4,321 for Nifty and the exchanges decided to close the market at 10.01 a.m. to cool off the bourses. Here is the chart that highlights that day's market move. Now you'll wonder, how much did that trader make on his 2 lakh rupee bet? At 10.01 a.m. on that glorious Monday morning, his position was valued at 28 lakh rupees. A whopping 1,300% gain overnight. Now this is the kind of trades that almost all traders, including me, aspire to experience. But while options are complex instruments, carefully planned trades with basic risk management techniques can yield asymmetric returns. And in this module, Karthik helps us to understand how options work. Welcome to the Varsity video series. My name is Karthik Rangappa. In this series, let's try and understand options and how you can trade them. Just like the futures, options are derivative contracts as well. There are two types of options, the call option and the put option. Now, before we dig deeper into these call and put options, let me tell you a quick story. There are two friends, Ajay and Venu. Venu owns a piece of land which is valued at 50 lakh rupees. And Ajay wants to buy this piece of land today from Venu because he thinks in six months time, there's a new highway project that is likely to come up near Venu's land. And the property price there is likely to increase to at least one crore rupees. Now the value of the land will increase only if this highway project comes up. Ajay wants to buy this land from Venu but his only worry is, what in six months, if the project does not materialize, then he'll be stuck with a piece of land which is of no use to him. So he is in a dilemma. So Ajay gives Venu a non-refundable fee of rupee 5 lakh today and tells him that six months down the lane, he will decide whether he wants to buy the land or not. If Ajay decides to buy the land six months hence, then Venu will have to give him the piece of land at the price that they fixed today, that is 50 lakh rupee. However, if Ajay decides not to buy the land six months hence, then Venu can just keep the five lakh rupee that he has paid as a non-refundable fee. Now, if you think through this, what Ajay really has done here is, he has bound Venu into an obligation to sell the piece of land six months hence, only if he decides to exercise his right to buy the land. Now, think through this for a minute. What do you think is likely to happen six months down the lane? Well, whatever is likely to happen is dependent on the price of the land as such. Now, the price can move in three different ways. Either the price can increase, which means to say that the highway project that Ajay has been dreaming about has actually come true and therefore the price has shot up. Or the price can go down for unforeseen circumstances or the price can remain flat at 50 lakh rupees. So let us look at the first scenario where the price of the land increases. 
That means to say, Ajay's expectation of the highway project has come true. Therefore, the price of the land has shot up to let's say 1 crore. Now, what do you think Ajay is likely to do? Well, he'll walk up to Venu and insist that Venu sells the land to Ajay at the price that they fixed 6 months earlier, which was 50 lakh rupees. Unfortunately, since Venu has accepted the 5 lakh as a non-refundable fee, is now obligated to sell this piece of land to Ajay. Now, if you look at this from a PNL perspective, Ajay gets to buy a piece of land which is worth 1 crore by paying just 50 lakh. Of course, he's paid 5 lakhs as advance, a non-refundable advance. So adjusting for that, he gets to make 45 lakh in profit. Venu, on the other hand, is forced to sell a piece of land which is worth 1 crore in the open market at a price of 50 lakh simply because he accepted that non-refundable fee six months earlier and got into an obligation with Ajay. Let's look at the second scenario where the price of land actually decreases. Let's assume it falls to 40 lakh rupees. What do you think Ajay is likely to do now? Well, it doesn't make any sense for Ajay to buy a piece of land which is available at 40 lakhs in the open market by paying 50 lakhs to Venu. Remember, 50 lakh was the price set six months before. So the price of the deal is set to 50 lakh. Irrespective of where the price move, the deal has to be executed at 50 lakh. Therefore, in this case, because the price of land has decreased, Ajay has zero incentive to go and buy a piece of land which is valued at 40 lakhs by paying 50 lakhs. So in this case, Ajay simply walks away from the deal, forfeiting the 5 lakh that he has paid as non-refundable advance. Therefore, in this case, Venu gets to make a clean 5 lakh rupee as his profit. Let's look at the third scenario where the price of land is 50 lakhs. The price hasn't changed. That means to say nothing really has happened. There is no highway project. There is no negative sentiment. The price has remained flat. What do you think Ajay is likely to do now? Clearly, there is no incentive for Ajay to buy the piece of land from Venu because he will be stuck with a piece of land which is otherwise useless for him. Again, in this situation, he'll simply walk away from the deal and Venu will get to make 5 lakh as a profit. I hope you've understood this example very clearly. If you have understood this example with all its nuances, then I'm pretty sure that you're on a good path to understand options. In fact, if you've understood this example well, then this is exactly how a call option works. Lastly, as you can see, options are leveraged instruments. You use a small amount of capital to control a large amount of stock. With options, you not only have to get the direction of the stock right, but timing, speed and the price of the asset in the future is also of consequence. We will learn all these things in the coming videos. Key takeaways from this video are 